Right, and welcome to Super Sound Showcase. My name is Tim. We are sponsored by Culture Fix today, and we are here with a very special guest. Uh, we are here with Phil Casey. How's it going? Very good. Thanks for having me in. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, before we get started, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're doing. Well, I'm playing around uh, Williamsburg. Uh, you might see me as a solo act. Look up Phil Casey. Uh, find my schedule on Facebook, uh, but I also play in a trio. The trio is called Scrapper Tuesday, so you can find us at scrappertuesday.com. And then sometimes, you know, if we're not getting the uh, the full bucks, you know, we'll show up as just a duo. And then you don't get the full Tuesday, you just get the T. That's called the Scrapper T Duo. All right, well, scrap, Scrapper T. Scrapper T, that's all you get. Yep. All right. <laughs> So where did the name come from, I have to ask? Well, Scrapper Blackwell, he's a, a, an old acoustic uh, blues player. Mm -hmm. And then the Tuesday portion of it uh, came from, I was uh, jamming with a bunch of guys I knew down in Hampton. We did that for many years and we always did it on a Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. uh, so it just was, you know, pick up music uh, on a Tuesday night, a little, you know, pick up with Scrapper Blackwell on Tuesday night, kind of that. Very cool, so that's where it all started. Yeah, I guess you could say that's where uh, this particular configuration started. Yes, right. You know, uh, like Ted Baxter, you know, it all goes back to a little cabin in the woods, uh, you know, but <laughs> but uh, yes, uh, the Williamsburg portion, uh, yes, started with a, a jam session on a Tuesday night. All right. Well, where did you get your start in music? You know, I was a kid when the Beatles come out, uh, so of course I was in the, the garage bands, but I was self-taught. Uh, that was a time you, when you self-taught, uh, you didn't have all the resources of the internet the way you do now. So I was pretty bad, in other words, uh, because <laughs> my instructional materials uh, just didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. So I mostly sang. Uh, and then when I reached age 30, I said, well, I've got to cut this nonsense and I've actually got to learn something. And I, so I learned mandolin. Uh, Took some lessons, at least enough to become uh, proficient, uh, uh, you know, with cording and, and, and some fiddle tunes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was living in Iowa at that time. And uh, almost, uh, well, maybe a year after I, I started trying to take it more seriously, I moved to New York, which is actually where I was raised, upstate New York. And I teamed up with uh, a high school friend named Al Spain, and we became Casey in Spain. And well before uh, we had matured musically, we were nonetheless pushing ourselves out there on stages, uh, making a few bucks. <laughs> As you do, yeah. <laughs> As you do, that's correct. Uh, and, uh, you know, coincidentally, uh, Casey and Spain uh, were supposed to play uh, in a, a concert by a town um, just last week. I was supposed to be in upstate New York, and we were going to do a reprise of that group uh, but we had to uh, cancel that because uh, Virginia was on the quarantine list and I didn't really want to show up at a town concert on a stage saying, yay, I'm just in from Virginia, you know, so. Yeah, 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 yeah I, I get that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, um, so talking more about your music, um, it sounds like you've got uh, a little bit of a repertoire. You've got a couple of albums out. I do, I yes, you can uh, download those uh, from just about any streaming service, uh, certainly uh, Amazon to name one. Uh, those are uh, original uh, tunes, all originals. Uh, the first one is called The Tidewater Fishing Report. Uh, there is a song on the album by that name, too, where I, I try to update you on where you can get your uh, crappy that day. Uh, when we're live, you know, I, I try to update it. That's really not true, but that's how I introduce the song. Because <laughs> you got to go for the rhymes. Uh, I, and then I, I, I have a second one called Tidewater Tales. Okay, so it, obviously those sound like they're more Virginia based. You know, I was going for that, and there are a number of songs uh, that have historical themes, local themes. If you listen to the lyrics, you will be re rewarded with place names, people names that you go, oh, I think I know that. 
Uh, you know, so I have one called the Peninsula Campaign, 1862, or I have one called uh, Lucy uh, Ludwell Paradise, uh, right down here in Colonial Williamsburg. You can see the Lucy Ludwell uh, house. Mm -hmm. uh, so I tell the backstory on her. Or uh, for Virginia Beach, I have one about the the uh, the witch duck, uh, the legend of uh, uh, how witch duck got its name. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, I, oh, and I, you know, I, 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 for statewide, I have uh, oh, what is that one? The you're driving past the exit starts with an L. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have I. There's two towns out out west. Uh, I can't think of the names right now. And when you're driving past on I-64, they they appear together, uh, and it looks like a woman's name as much as it does town. Louisa Ferncliff. That's what it is. Okay. So the towns of Louisa and Ferncliff uh, appear on a sign, and so I made that into a song as if the woman was saying. Hey, I'm 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 still here to somebody that travels up and down the highway on a regular basis, saying, "What you know, get off the highway, let's get back together again." Oh. And so I made a whole song about that as nice. well. So, there, yes, it's more than just local; it's statewide as well. Uh, but then there'll also be uh, you know traditional blues songs, uh, uh, themes. N n not the not that I'm recreating traditional blues songs, but uh, you know th those sorts of uh, lyrical uh, th uh, themes. Right. So Virginia is pretty much a, a really big inspiration for, for your music. It, it has been. I tell you, I got started in a, a group called Scuppernoggery, and uh, that name comes from Scuppernog the Wine, and I had written a song uh, with a nonsense syllable, nonsense syllable, uh, Scuppernoggery, and, uh, and, and so we took that as the, uh, as the name of the group. And that group uh, consciously uh, attempted uh, to uh, use Virginia themes in, it, in its music, and we, and we played places like the Watermen's Museum. Uh, uh, we we played the the Hampton History Museum. Mm -hmm. You know, you know. So yes, we were consciously trying to tell the stories of Virginia, and so several of those songs remained in my repertoire, and I and I added to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, would you consider yourself a, a wine buff? Hmm. By the quantity, I suppose so. <laughs> uh, by the uh, the dollars spent, no, not not really. <laughs> by the knowledge, uh, no, no, I've got the just uh, just enough to get me by. All right. <laughs> well, uh, so you definitely have your own songs, but you do also play covers. I partner with my sister on writing an, a number of songs. If you uh, go out, uh, you know, and are streaming some of them, and uh, some of my songs sound more literate than others, it may be because my sister, who is a poet, uh, has uh, contributed lyrics or even written whole songs. Uh, I, I'm, I'm carrying with me a book to prove that she is a poet. Uh, it's not easy for a poet to get a, a, a book published. Mm. Uh, this one's called Rocking Like It's All Intermezzo. Uh, but I do, I do. Uh, let me, uh, you know, and it's hard uh, to answer the very typical uh, question, what kind of music do you play? Yeah. It's very hard to answer that. That might be true of everybody. But uh, I, I, I'm, I try to play a music that I call toe tapping. You know, it has to have a, a groove to it where, where the, uh, the listeners can, can find where to tap their toes. Uh, I'm not saying it's all up tempo, uh, but I, I like them to, to, to feel uh, the music. So to give you an example, uh, a, a, a set I've got coming up this Sunday, I'm, I'm kicking off with a Herman Hermit song, believe it or not. I'm into something good. You know, and that it just makes you feel good, I think. Uh, yeah. But, but, but uh, you know, it's something that maybe you haven't heard recently, and you go, when you hear it, you go, oh, I think I, I think I know that. You know, and it just makes you feel good. I follow that up with a, a Joe Ely song. He's from down in Texas, he, kind of country. Mm -hmm. Then I do Glory of Love, uh, which was a, a, actually a Bill Brunsey uh, tune, a blues tune, but sounds like a, an American, uh, you know, songbook kind of tune. Mm -hmm. uh, then I do a bluegrass number. I do the reggae tune, Three Little Birds. I do a gospel tune, Beautiful Tomorrow. 
uh, back to Tex-Mex, uh, then a traditional blues song on a uh, cigar box guitar. I won't go on, but I, I hope I'm creating an impression that uh, uh, the, the sources are varied, right. but I try to bring them together through my musical sensibility, uh, and, and, I, and I hope it hangs together in that way. Yeah, it spans the gamut. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. It does. But you mentioned something just a second ago, a cigar box guitar. Yeah, yeah. So my son-in-law gave me one that he made. He actually went to a, 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 a cigar store in Hampton, uh, collected a bunch of cigar boxes, and then uh, fitted it with a neck. And, and he gave it to me, and I had no idea how to play it, nor did he. Uh, he just <laughs> thought it would be a cool project. Right. And uh, so I started fooling around with it, not really having any idea of what would come of it. And it, it's similar to a dulcimer, so it encouraged uh, the creation of melodies. And before I knew it, I was, I was playing it, I was pairing up um, uh, lyrics to the... Uh, uh, to the melodies that were coming out, and uh, and it, it suddenly became part of the act, which I had not expected at all. And then people started telling me, I really like the sound of the cigar box, and so I, I had to start learning songs, and mm -hmm. it turns out there's a whole internet subculture of uh, cigar box guitar oh, yeah, players. Sure. I had no idea. <laughs> uh, uh, and so it's uh, it's become important. Uh, one time I, I did a, a set where 50% of my songs in a three hour uh, set were uh, on cigar box guitar. Wow. Yeah. All right. So, uh, again, this has been Super Sound Showcase. We will be right back uh, after these messages. Colonial Williamsburg's home for the music you love. 93.5 The Berg. All right, so welcome back to Super Sound Showcase. My name is Tim. Again, we are sponsored by Culture Fix today, and we are here with Phil Casey. How's it going? Very, very good. Thanks for having me once again. Absolutely. So, what are you going to be playing for us today? Well, this first song is called Singing About Dancing. It's one of my own. <laughs> Started dancing by the family TV. We like the rock and soul songs. Learning steps the kids are doing in Detroit. Sometimes right, sometimes wrong. Dancing bravely by a neon jukebox and an arm and legs too. Bit up a scheming and a pinch of seduction. Yeah, we're pairing off two by two. I can write about loving Well, I walk about in a trance I just do what I do But when I sing about dancing Thinking about you Dancing crazy around a blazing bonfire One side hot, one side cold It's an autumn something Celebration of the restless Young and the bold Write about loving. Oh, I walk about in a trance. I just do what I do. But when I sing about dancing, thinking about you. partner going to and fro, yeah, show a little do -si do swing and sway, tease and play, push and hold, smile and scold and T.A. And she, oh, we used to dance like King Kong's children, Pacific Isle Paradise, spin around till we fell down dizzy under King Kong's watchful eye. Write about loving. Yeah, I walk about in a trance. I just do what I do. Well, when I sing about dancing, thinking about you. When I sing about, when I sing about. Nice. 
Nice. Yeah, I, I could definitely see how that could be a toe tapper. Oh, good. Yes, that's 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 what I go for. That's right. All right. Toe tap and roots music. <laughs> so what's next? Well, next uh, I have something called the Question Beggar. This is kind of a philosophical song. You know, the uh, the singer, the narrator, you know right away you can't trust this guy uh, because he refers to 4000 B.C. when there were no philosophers philosophizing in 4000 B.C. So he tries to solve some of the great philosophical problems, but you're left scratching your head saying, I'm not sure that's true. Hmm. Well, Zeno taught riddles by the sea In 4000 B.C. We're still philosophizing, defining and analyzing, but here's some things on which we agree. Talking about a chicken and an egg like the one and two, well, which came up first just to think it through. In a solid egg, there's a chicken picking. How to get in there if the chicken came second? That's my contribution of that. Yeah, my contribution of that. Well, you can think what you want, but I'm just stating facts. That's my contribution of that. In a tree, in a forest, when no one's around here. Yeah. Tree falls down and it hits the ground. There's a shattered tree and scattered debris. Crash like that don't go down silently. Well, that's my contribution of that. Yeah, my contribution of that. Well, you can think what you want, but I'm just stating facts. That's my contribution of that. That's my contribution of that. Yeah, my What you want, but I'm just hating facts. That's my contribution of that. There's more problems that he solves, but I figured that was enough to give you that feel. <laughs> so, what other problems does he solve? Well, he solves the problem of uh, if you add all the odd numbers and all the even numbers together, they each equals infinity, and yet when you add them both together, they equal infinity. So, how can they both be equal when you only got the odds and you only got the evens? Oh. <laughs> and then he also solves the problem of the, the rabbit and the hare, the rabbit, no, excuse me, the hare and the tortoise, uh, you know, and he, he keeps uh, uh, closing the distance by half. Does he ever actually catch the rabbit? If he only gets halfway then and then halfway and halfway, halfway, you can't get all the way. It's almost like string theory. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose so. All right. Well, that was awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. My all pleasure. right. But, so before we wrap things up completely, you do have something special for us. Uh, I, did, I did bring the uh, cigar box guitar, which we, we talked about during the interview, yes. Uh, and it's a sound that uh, you, know, you don't uh, hear all the time. And so maybe when we were talking about it, you, you didn't know what it was. And so I wanted to demonstrate a little bit of that. Let me grab the pick there from the guitar. <laughs> So it can be uh, it can be bluesy. Like that. Hmm? Or like I said, I I first discovered it kind of as a uh, that kind of song. Every day is a gamble Let me lay my money down Deal I hand Stir the pot with choice and chance Like that. Those words were actually written by my sister, by the way. Oh, wow. They didn't sound like me. <laughs> <laughs> I think they don't. Uh, and I, one more demonstration. So I mentioned a song named Louisa Ferncliff. That's more in a blues mood. I said, hey, Louisa, hear me calling now, hey, Louisa, well, I'm driving past. 
past your exit on I-64. Memories are popping out, too crazy to ignore. Like that. Yeah, it, it, it's almost got like a, a, a wash kind of ethereal sound to it almost. You can, uh, you know, add effects uh, to it, and uh, yeah, I think what you're describing is uh, I was going heavy on the reverb, uh, right? Yeah, I like I like that. It fills out the sound. You've only got the three strings that you're working with, so that uh, effect, uh, yeah, adds to the sound. I believe. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming in again. Oh, it's my pleasure. I, I thank you for the work you're doing promoting local music here. Uh, well, we do all right. <laughs> all right. Well, again, this has been Super Sound Showcase. My name is Tim, and we'll see you next week. Oh, actually. Tim, I, if I could uh, mention that I will be at uh, Charlie's Airport Restaurant. Uh, Charlie's does great work out there. It's a great atmosphere. Come on out on Friday night flights, they call it, where you can see maybe some private craft going off. And uh, I'll be there with the Scrapper Tea Duo. Possibly on Saturday morning, I will be at the Williamsburg Farmer's Market. We're not sure uh, they will be able to use a musician uh, this coming Saturday due to COVID. Uh, I'll be playing that solo. Or uh, coming out to Barrett's uh, in uh, Williamsburg, Barrett's Seafood Restaurant. They're doing great work with their outdoor seating. Uh, I play outdoors. It's all outdoors. Uh, so come on out uh, Sunday, 12 to 3. 12 to 3. Right. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. Sorry about that. No, no problem. <laughs> no, no. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you again so much for coming in. This has been Super Sound Showcase. My name is Tim. We are sponsored by Culture Fix, and we'll see you guys next week.